Danny with us? No, they brought Al. He got quite a kick out of it. <laughs> I'd like to walk into the west. I sure got a thrill out of it. <laughs> Almost swallowed my bridge work. <laughs> hey, you certainly did scare me, young fella. I'm not used to having a gun pulled on me. <laughs> How are we doing, Bob? Oh, that's perfect, son. Keep up the good work, and I'll speak to Tom Meeks. He'll put you with the circus. Hey. Can we have that ride now, Bob? Sure, why not? Wait a minute, Bob. Before you make any engagement. Oh, tell me I have to make another trip. I wouldn't ask you to do this if the people weren't in port. It's around the world tourists from England. Why I just came. They'll be here on the 4.40. Did you hear that, Persimmon? I heard it. Well, you're certainly making our last day a tough one. We wanted to get away early. Oh, come on, Bob. You're not going to quit. Now, Mr. Nolan, when Persimmon and I took this job, we told you it would only be temporary. Well, might jack up the wages a little. Mm-mm. No inducement. Look, all we wanted was a little money to work that mine of ours. I ain't anxious to pull out. All I ever got out of that mine was lumbago. Mother Persimmon. <laughs> of course, we don't know how good it is yet. But if you have a mine, you can't blame for wanting to work it. Sorry to disappoint you, girls. Our ride's off. I'll get one of the other boys to take you. Mike! We get to have our money ready when we get back, Mr. Nolan. This is our last trip. Come on, Persimmon. Traveling again. You don't call this traveling. Hey, I'll show you some real traveling if that old hole in the ground is as good as Ben says it is. Well, Ben ought to know. He's been around long enough. Wish we didn't have to make this trip again. I bet old Ben's been packed and waiting for hours. <laughs> Where do I get my hands on that gold? Then I'm off for foreign parts. Uh -huh. There's a say in those trip folders. <laughs> I'm going to see the canals of Venice, the leaving tower of Pisa. And I'm going to the Louvre and see Mona Lucy. Yeah, you better see that you know that welcome speech of yours. Whoa! Say, like an incandescent jewel. A what? An incandescent jewel. Iridescent, dearie. Iridescent. Iridescent. Incandescent. What's the difference? I can say it any way I want. If we hit that gold, get up. Oh. What are you doing back here on that street, though? Oh, I got to put the act on again, but it's the last time. Ah, uh, that's what you said last trip. You ain't going to get rich on no dude ranch. And we ain't going to get fat working that claim unless we got beans. <laughs> well, I couldn't let the boss down. Nolan knows we're through after this, then. I'll tell you what to do. You start now as long as you're all packed, and we'll follow. This ain't just another stall. Certainly not. We'll be right on your heels. And if the mine clicks, you're in for 10 percent. Don't forget that. It'll click. I got a lot of confidence in that claim. I haven't made many mistakes. I'll see you up there. And no more stalling. Bring up a deck of cards. All right. You ready, Jake? Sure. Here she comes. Have you got your mustache? Sure. Got your speech? Sure. I can say it backwards. Mm-hmm. That's been the trouble. Come on. That's the man from El Raposo. Welcome to the West. 
Elric. I'm Mrs. Henrietta Barclay. How do you do, ma'am? I'm Persimmon. You're what? Persimmon. Oh, pardon me. I thought you said Persimmon. I did. That's my name. Oh. Welcome to the West. Elric Pozo. Oh, come, my man. What about the luggage? That will be taken care of, mister. Right this way. Welcome to the West. El Reposo greets you. Nestle at the foot of the snow-clad peak. We're supposed to ride in that. Rather primitive, but intriguing. I like the idea, Hadley. El Reposo is nothing if not Western. The spirit of the West still lives. The automobile will never replace the horse. You've been drinking. Huh. No, ma'am, that's... Just the kind of a welcome speech I'm supposed to make. Oh, I see. But carry on. Huh? Get on with it. Oh. Welcome to the West. El Reposo greets you. Thank you. It's very pretty. Drive carefully, coachman. Well, I think it's an imposition to make us ride in a thing like this. Just an example of the provincialism that bores me to death. Makes me ashamed that I'm an American. Now you understand why I've been living in London for the last couple of years. To keep from riding in stagecoaches? I'm enjoying it. That settles it, Hadley. If Pamela's made her mind to enjoy it, nothing on earth can change her. That's a libel on my character, Aunt Henry. I'm one of the most docile of humans. Aren't I, Hadley? You're one of the most charming. You should make a model husband, Hadley. That's what I keep telling Pamela. It's not very successfully so far. Well, there they are. What are you going to do with this? Welcome to the West. Del Reposo greets you. That'll do, Coachman. We've been welcomed enough. No offense, madame. Just Del Reposo's novel way of introducing you to the wild and woolly West. 
on the level. She wouldn't get out of the coach. Well, I don't blame her. Well, I don't know what you're going to do, young man. If she says she won't get out, she won't get out. Do you mind if I drive her in, then? It's perfectly safe. We do it all the time. We'll be in right after you. I think the whole thing's decidedly stupid. I don't see any harm in it. Go ahead. Thank you. Come on, coachman. scare some of the stubbornness out of that girl. I know what's the matter with you. You're stage struck. Get along there, you. Get in there. I right, take care of those other people, Jake. Now you get up there on that seat and start driving. You make a false move, I'll tell you. Never mind about the others. You better start worrying about yourself. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with you. <laughs> well, if you don't mind the suggestion, you might straighten that silly moustache. It is silly, isn't it? There. The show's over. The others have gone ahead in the automobile. Oh, I see. Am I being honored by this personal attention? All part of my job, lady. The hotel pays me to scare people, and I scare them. Well, what a lofty ambition. Sort of Western Frankenstein. We don't get along very well, do we? Is it necessary? I'd better keep my mouth shut. <laughs> That's the first intelligent thing you've said. waiting for permission to speak. Hey, coachman. Go up there. Hey! He's gone. Are you hurt? Go away from me. Not a little surprise, I suppose. It certainly was a surprise, but I didn't engineer that one. Let me help you. Go away from me. You deliberately had those horses run away so that you could do some more of your monster heroics. They really 
really were running away. That was serious. Here, I'll give you a hand. Come on. Quite comfortable where I am, thank you. Okay, you have a funny idea of comfort. By now. You can't do this to me. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to try. Have you folks been doing a little swimming? And what happened to you? Oh, I just dropped off to pick up a few daisies. Get out. you one of my boots. Still insist on being funny, don't you? I'll carry you. I'd like to get my coat. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to apologize, Mr. Walker. I realize now the horses were running away. I'm afraid I wasn't a very good sport. Am I forgiven? There's nothing to forgive, Miss Barclay. I really ought to apologize for laughing at you. But when you hobbled in wearing this coat and with one slipper, well, it was the funniest thing I've seen in years. I I understand you're a guide. I am. Would you like to act as our guide while we're here? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. My partner and I are leaving today. We have some work of our own to attend to. Oh, another day wouldn't make any difference, would it? Oh, uh, I don't know, but when you make up your mind to do a thing, uh, you really don't like to change it. Oh, well, I'm sorry. After the way you manage things today, I'd rather look forward to you being with us. I don't like to disappoint you, Miss Barclay. Well, that's all right. We can get someone else. I might stay one more oh, day. Don't bother. Just ask the manager to send the guide to us. Anyone will do. Very well. Well, it looks as if you are not going to have your little revenge. We'll see. Did you hear what he said? Miss Barclay, when you hobbled into that hotel, it was one of the funniest things I ever saw. Ha, ha, ha. Hobbled him, as if I were a horse. I'd like to make him hobble. You're gonna be your own boss for a while, eh? Yes, I'm sick and tired of being a dude cowboy and making personally conducted tours. I don't blame you for ducking that English party. The little I saw on Miss Barclay, she's no bargain. There she goes now. Look at her strut. She certainly looks like a million. Yeah, but a terribly swelled head. Oh, she's all right. Just too much money, that's all. She needs someone to slap a bridle on her. You couldn't tame her like a horse. Why not? Just a question of handling. Why, in two days, I'd have a reading right out of my hand. Oh, get away with that stuff. 
I'll bet you five bucks in two days she wouldn't even be talking to you. <laughs> if I was staying on, I'd take you up. I'll uh, give you two to one. Boy, at that, you've got to admit, she certainly oozes class. Today's Wednesday. Ten bucks to five, that by Saturday she won't even put in a call for you. You mean that? Yeah. Ten to five? Yeah. It's a bet. Shake on her. Say, tell Mr. Nolan to hold up that money until Saturday. Will uh, Persimmon stay on with you? Oh, sure. Give me some of these new travel folders. I'll send Persimmon on another cruise. Oh, sure. Cocktails? I don't mind. Let's go to the bar. Did he call? Yeah. But it'll cost you ten bucks. Persimmon. I want to talk to you. Okay. Yeah. We sell it's got to be for cash and a big slice at that. I'll be. Mm. Some number with a lot of those goose eggs behind it? Name a figure. How many? Oh, about... Uh, what? 10,000. That's a lot of money. But I'll have it in a few days. That's all settled, is it? You sure it'll be all right with your partner? Oh, sure, if it's cash. But it's got to be all cash. Oh, boy, and then will I travel. That trip to Egypt has sure got me. Kind of breathtaking, isn't it? Beautiful. Just like a painting. They call that point Lamentation Point. Why did they ever give it such a depressing name? Oh, it's from an old legend. I don't know it very well myself. About an Indian who was humiliated because he lost his horse. He was ashamed to go back to his tribe. Ridiculous, I'd say. You don't know your West, Miss Barclay. Or an Indian, or a cowboy, to lose his horse is one of the worst things. Those flowers are lovely. What are they? Oh, those? Uh, blue lupin. I'll get you some. Pardon me. Guess we'll have to ride double then. I won't. It's your horse that's gone, not mine. But how am I going to get back? You can walk, fly, or run backwards, as far as I'm concerned. I prefer this way. Come on. I'd rather walk than ride with you.
Holy. Yes, ma'am. I realize how you feel, Hadley, but I can't force Pamela into anything. You just have to wait. If she decides to marry you, she'll do it. If she doesn't, she won't. Well, that's very indefinite. Besides, I don't like her off alone with that cowboy. Oh, don't worry. Well, then why is she off riding with him? Well, that's Pamela. Oh. I wonder why your horse ran away. They'll always run if you hit them with a quirt. That was childish of me, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm really ashamed of myself. Will you forgive me? That's what you said yesterday. Mm, don't be so vindictive. Silly of us to be carrying on a sort of cue, don't you think? It does seem like a waste of good energy. Exactly. From now on, I'm going to put all that energy into making a good impression on you. Well, you've made a pretty good dent already. Can bear compliment, can't you? <laughs> oh, I dropped my lovely flowers. Well, hold the reins, I'll get them. See how you like the exercise. Here, my man. You're hired as a guide. These other little pleasantries are not included in your wages. Oh, uh, I always throw those in for good measure. You see... Mike! Good afternoon. $10,000 cash. What do you say? Oh, she's a real sport. How about 15? Oh, boy, what spirit. We're going to get along great. We're going to take 20000 And she's got such gorgeous blue eyes. Or I wouldn't care if her eyes were fried in butter. Will you take 20000 Oh. Huh? For what? For the mine. Who offered 20000 Nobody. But then, suppose they should. Suppose you get some sense. Nobody's going to offer that much money. Oh, Mr. Nolan, I'd like to retain Mr. Walker as our guide for the rest of our stay here. How long will that be, Miss Barclay? Oh, that all depends. I'll try and arrange it. Thank you very much. Corral, please. I've stopped in cowboys. Oh, hello, Mr. Nolan. You bet I will. Yes, sir. Will you take 20000 For what? The mine! Oh, oh, look, Persimmon, you take charge of the mine. I'm taking charge of Miss Barclay.
I am. You got an overcoat? Overcoat? What for? She's gonna be out in the cold with that girl. Say, are you trying to burn me up? Oh, if you're not burned up by this time, you must be made of asbestos. You know what that letter said. That guy's in the sweet spot if he finds out what he's got. Think what he could do if he had any real money. Now, I can pick that property up for 20 grand. How about it? I thought you said 10. Now, Walker wouldn't let it go for that. So what's the difference? I'll give him 10 in cash and the rest, maybe. You haven't got the dough borrowed from the old lady. We can split close to 100 grand. Sounds all right. It is all right. Think what that punk cowboy could do if he had a bankroll. I'll take you out to the mine in the morning. You can look it over yourself. Yeah. A little horseback ride might do me some good. Yeah. I was just thinking. I hope our being out there doesn't make him think we're too interested. He might check up the price again. Yeah. That old guy was pretty enthusiastic, wasn't he? He's kind of excited, too. Say, that's why he wanted us to tell Walker to hustle out there. He struck something. We gotta get busy, Al. Yeah. See what I can do. Seven. Oh, uh, have a cigar? Just one? <laughs> you know, uh, without having a look at that mine of yours, looks like a pretty good piece of property. Are you interested in mines, Mr. Thornton? I'm interested in anything where I can make any money. Hey, what are you planning to do with that claim? Well, I turned down an offer of $10,000 for it, and now I'm considering twenty. Yes, I know. From Doyle. I don't want to disappoint you, but he hasn't any money. He tried to sell it to me for twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five? Yes. I said to myself, if I'm going to pay twenty-five thousand dollars for that mine, I'm going to pay it to you. Why, oh, you're kidding, Mr. Thornton. Would you really pay twenty-five thousand dollars cash? Sure I would. Of course, it's a gamble, but I'd be willing to take a chance. Provided that you don't say anything about it to Doyle. Oh. I don't like to discuss my business deals with anybody. Say, I won't even tell Bob. And will he be surprised when he sees that dough? Is it a deal? I'll have the papers drawn up right away. <sighs> and I'll sit down and lay me out a cruise around the world. <laughs> How did they put a saddle on them camels? Thanks. I'm sorry, Henry, but I couldn't possibly lend you that much money at present. If we could make a handsome profit. I only need it for a couple of days. And I'll guarantee you that you could double your money on the transaction. Remember that little copper deal on the coast? That's true. It was profitable, wasn't it? But it's quite a sum. Of course, if we were in England, I suppose I could raise the money. Yes, sir. Say, a uh, story you told Doyle about a bet you made with Walker. Well, well that wouldn't be you, Mr. Thornton, unless you knew Bob. Just a little joke we had with him in regard to Miss Barker. A minute. Hope you're right about that ledge. I'll stake my reputation on it. That's why I sent for you. Those fellas were down here. I knew you had some kind of a deal on. I didn't want you to sell out till you saw what was here. Look at that. What did I tell you? Uh-huh, uh-huh. The deeper you go, the richer it gets. Yeah? I gotta sit down. Well, take it easy now, Ben. What do you think, huh? Bob, that's the richest strike since Tonopah. Do you mean that? Mean it? This mine's worth millions. Oh! Fine! Oh! 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 Come on, Ben! Let's get back to...
I'm going to buy this place. You've got a job for life. No, 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 no. Ben, open it up and show him quick. Is Miss Barclay in? Why, she told me that. Uh, hey, Nolan, you don't have to put your glasses on to find out what that looks like, do you? Open it up and look at it. Woo, boy. Hey, where is Miss Barclay? She, she left. She left. Yeah, she, she's gone. She flew east. She left this note here for you. Gee, Bob, I sure am glad to hear about all your good luck. And listen, if you have any chance at all, why, let me in on will you? That's Keep Bobby in as well. Keep Bobby in as well. I knew you'd do it. Let me in as well. Bobby, 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 Hey, Walker. <laughs> hey, what are you going to do about this? Let's go up to my room and have a talk. No, not now, Mr. Doyle. Oh, now, listen. Give me a break. I waste a lot of time with you fellows, you know. If anybody... Oh. You're in a tough spot. But Simmons has messed this thing all up. Simmons? He agreed to sell out to Thornton for $25,000. To Thornton? Yes. Thornton took it to London with him. Mr. Simmons thought he had a great deal. Brother, you can kiss that mine goodbye. <laughs> well, he can't sell that mine without my signature. Don't kid yourself, buddy. Under the law, you're bound by anything your partner agrees to. That's right, Bob. What he'll do to that partner of yours is nobody's business. Why, he's one of the slickest confidence men, not only in this country, but in the whole world. You mean he's a crook? Crook? He's all the crooks you ever heard about. If he's off at 25,000, that means he figures on paying about 10. Oh. Why, the mine is worth millions. And I'll tell you something else. If you think anything of the girl, you better hot foot it after that guy and break that thing up. He's only after her dough. How do you know? How do I know? Why, well, he told me. Did he leave any forwarding address? The doctors did. Can I have some money, Mr. Nolan? Anything you want, Bob. What are you going to do? All I want to do is get my hands on that fellow Thorne. That's good news. I've got the news than that. The bank has disposed of some of my securities. They're sending the money out by special messenger. Should be here shortly. Oh, that's fine. I'd like to get everything settled this afternoon. Now, how's Pamela? Pamela is very upset about this cablegram from uh, uh, Mr. Doyle. Doyle? Oh, 
Oh, this is only a scheme of Bob Walker's. Then everything is quite all right. Why, of course it is. Well, Miss Pamela, tea is ready. Whoopee, sir! I'm going to the inn and talk to the Simmons. If he still wants to carry out his business, that's his own affair. But I'm going to make sure that he understands. I believe you're still thinking of that cowboy. I'm afraid I'll have to run along. I'm taking the Simmons to the lodge this afternoon. When the money comes, would you mind sending it there instead of to the inn? Certainly not. I'll have Benson take it over. You're going to go through with this transaction. Is that a tablet? Naturally, I've gone this far. And you're sure that the Simmons understands everything? My dear Pamela, will you please leave this to me? Will you excuse me, please? A young lady should inquire either for Mr. Persimmon Bates or for myself. Send her up to my room. Yes, Mr. Thornton. That is. Yes, sir. Now, is everything clear? Clear as clear, sir. And here's the key. <coughs> Everything's set, Persimmon. In a little while, you'll be a rich man. Gee. Have you got the contract? How do you like the California top? Strike me pink. Makes you good. Ten years younger, mate. You looking for someone, sir? Yes, Mr. Thornton. Why, Mr. Thornton just left, sir. You'll find him at the Dog's Head Inn, about three miles from here. Thank you very much. Dog's Head Inn, driver. He's staying here with Mr. Thornton. You'll find him up in 22. Is Mr. Bates here, please? Yes, miss. Come right in. They've just stepped out for a moment. Take a seat. They'll be right back. I want to see Mr. Thornton. He and the American gentleman have gone up to London for the day, sir. Having lunch at Simpson's. London? I just came from there. Taxi! 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 Well, well, how do I get back to London? How did you get down here? Oh, that's a 
the girl. Mrs. Barclay told me to give you this. Thank you. You'll find everything comfortable here. I light the fire to take the chill off. Anything else, sir? No, that'll be all, then. Two thousand pounds. You weigh your money over here? How much is that in dollars? Ten thousand. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Thornton. You told me I was to get 25,000. So you will. And the rest of the money is on the way over. It'll be here before we're ready to leave. In the meantime, uh, sit down and we'll settle everything. You're sure the rest of that money's coming? Sure. Ah! Bob's sure gonna be tickled when he finds out what I've done. Yes. Ah. Uh. Here goes. Your full legal name. Persimmon. Is that your real name? Well, that's what everybody calls me. What were you christened? What did they call you when you were born? Baby. What name did you sign when you registered the claim? Willie. Willie Bates. We'll sign that. Bob, I was just wishing you were here. Don't sign anything, Persimmon. Stay right there. It's already signed. Hey, Bob, cut it out. What are you trying to do? Let him alone. Let him alone. He'll ruin everything. Bob, let me go. Let me go. Stay right here. Bob, oh, look what Bob's doing to Mr. Thornton. You know what Mr. Thornton is trying to do to you. Say, I don't know what he's trying to do to me. He's trying to give me twenty. What's the matter with you? Are you all crazy? Bob! Bob, the paper! The paper! <laughs> it's burning! Oh, oh, Bob, you're burning up $25,000! You keep out of this. There goes my trip to Egypt. A mine is worth millions. I cabled you that three times. Ask your friend. I get it. I'll see you outside. I'll bet you ten dollars I'm going to marry you. I wouldn't give you two to one on that. <laughs> the horse kicked me. <laughs> 